This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, I wanted to play around in 3D Desmos. I'm gonna show you what I did here. I took like a beam of light from the sun and made a shadow on the XY plane. So here it is through the blue one, and then here it is through the green one. And the cool thing about the green one is it even can move around. So I can move this point wherever I want and that'll shoot through it. And then it stops at the XY plane. So in this video, I'll try to go through the thought process how I made this. Let's clear all this stuff. So first I wanted to make that sun. So I just plotted the point 466. And I wanted it to be orange. So I just hit shift, click here, and I made it orange. And to make it bigger, we click here and we get 10. So there's our sun right there at 466 is where it's located. Then I plotted another point at 123, 1, 2, 3, and it was blue. And I did another point at ABC, where A, B, and C could be any value we want. So we can move these around, and I had this green. So these could be any value we want, it can move around. So we want to figure out how do we draw those sun rays to those points, ultimately the line through these two points and through those two points. If you're going to try this on your own, pause it right now, because I'm going to go through it in three, two, one. So first we're going to do the equation of the line through our sun, four, six, six, and that point, one, two, three. And here are the notes for the equation of a line in 3D. So this x sub one, y sub one, and z sub one, those are the coordinates of our first point. So that'll be x sub one, y sub one, z sub one. And then for x sub two, y sub two, z sub two, that's the coordinates of our second point, x sub two, y sub two, z sub two. And then t is called a parameter. t can equal any number within a range that we allow. And that's what forms the line. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So according to these notes, this would be the equation of the line through our orange point and our blue point. In the place of x sub one, I plugged in four. In the place of y sub one, I plugged in six. And z sub one, we plugged in six. And similar, x2, y2, z2 became one, two, three. And x1, y1, z1 became four, six, six. So apparently this is the parametric equation of the line. I wanna explore this further, but let's look at it in Desmos first. The way we plug in that parametric equation is we make like a point with commas, but in the place of x, so it'll be x, y, z, but in the place of x, we're gonna put in the parametric equation. It was four plus t in parentheses one minus four. And then we'll do the same thing for y. It was six plus t times two minus six. And we'll do the same thing for z which was six plus t times three minus six. And now you see that it made that line. Let's make it blue. And there's the line right there. So I turn it off, it's gone. And then I turn it on, it shows up. So that gave us that line. And now the t, this is the range we're allowing t to be. So if I let t go from zero to one, this is how far it goes. But if I let t have more values, like 1.1, it goes a little bit further. Or 1.2, a little bit further, 1.3 and we can let it keep going. And eventually, when we get to two, we're gonna hit, and so we'll stop right there at two. So we verify these notes do work. The parametric equation will show the line in 3D space that goes through these two points. I'm kind of curious, why does this work? So let's see if we can derive it ourselves. Let's start with X. What's happening on the X part of this line? We're going from four to one. And this going from four to one, that's gonna be one T as we do that. If you remember here in Desmos, when we did one T, that brought us directly to our point. So one unit of the parameter T is gonna get us from this point to that point. So I'll just put the T right there. This X is starting at four. That's our starting point. And then we're gonna do some motion, so I'm gonna put a plus. And we know we're gonna multiply by the T. How do we get from four to one? Well, that's negative three. So that's all this is saying. It's saying, give us a starting point, and then based on the size of our t, how many units are we gonna move in the x direction? Where did this negative three come from? It ended up being this one minus the four. That's how we got the negative three. And really that one is x2, and then we're subtracting the four, which was x1. And then this four that we started at, that was the x1. So this equation is the first equation of our notes. So basically it's saying there's an x coordinate that has a starting point at this point, and then it changes by a certain amount to get from here to here. And that's gonna be multiplied by a parameter t. And then we can do the same thing for y and z. So let's do y. y is gonna start at this six, and it's gonna go through t equals one, and then it's gonna change by negative four. And then z is gonna start at six, and then it's gonna go through one parameter step, and that's gonna change by negative three. 
So once again, here's our equation. In fact, I can update it in Desmos. I can change this into a negative three. I can change this into a negative four. I can change this into a negative three. And once again, if I increase this T, let it go a whole nother step, then that'll bring us all the way down here. So now the second part of the question, how do we go through this ABC, this arbitrary point? That won't be in terms of fixed numbers like one, two, three. It'll be variables like ABC. Let's change this one, two, three into ABC, and we're gonna go through the same thing. We can take these notes again. This might get messy. Let's give it a little bit of space. So let's do X's first. In the place of X sub one, let's plug in four. In the place of X sub two, let's plug in A. And in place of X sub one, we'll plug in four again. Well, this is not gonna to be too difficult, is it? So let's do Y next. Y sub one is gonna be six. The Y sub two is the B, and the Y sub one is the six again. And then we'll do the Z. Z sub one, we're gonna start at the six. And then the Z sub two is gonna be the C. And then Z sub one is the six again. That was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. Let's bring this back over here and let's smush everything together. So I just need to plug this into Desmos and that should go through my ABC point. So let's start a new one of these and put parentheses and I'll put the commas. It's kind of fun to put the X, Y, Z. I put too many commas. X was equal to four plus T parentheses A minus four. And the Y was equal to six plus T parentheses B minus six. And then the Z was equal to six plus T parentheses C minus six. And look at that, it went right through it. Let's color it green. And there it is, it's going right through it. And we can move around like this and we can move the point even, and it will always go through the point no matter what A, B, and C are. We can even go below the X, Y plane and it just dips under there. It looks like it's going underwater, but it just dips under there, no problem. So now let's let it extend to the X, Y plane. So the trick is that as I extend it, what may hit the X, Y plane for a certain number, it's not as I move it. So as I move this around, now it's gonna go below. Oh, that's really close. But if I went down like this, it's going below it. So we need to find a value here that will have it stop at the X, Y plane, because that was my goal. I want it to be kind of like a shadow on the X, Y plane. So to do this on the X, Y plane, the Z is gonna be equal to zero, because that's what the X, Y plane is. So Z is this height here. If Z is zero, we're on the X, Y plane. So I just wanna set this Z right here equal to zero. So to do that, we'll say six plus T times C minus six equals zero. We're gonna subtract six from both sides, and then we'll divide both sides by C minus six. That gives us our value of T that would be equal to zero. So in the place of this two, I'm gonna put negative six divided by C minus six. And now it stops on the So no matter where I put this point, it's always gonna stop on Isn't that cool? So this can move around like this, it can move around this way. And even if I go below, it'll still stop. So it's shooting in the right direction, like if we're gonna hit that point, but it's stopping on the X, Y plane. So let's bring it back up here. And that's it, that's how it's done. I just thought one more thing, what if we make this like a D, make a slider, then I can make it look like a ray. So yeah, so as T changes, it goes like that. And I can make this D minus five, it look like a little ray laser beam that's shooting like this. There's so many fun things you can do in 3D in Desmos. It's brilliant. Speaking of brilliant, let's talk about brilliant. Brilliant has thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. And all of them are interactive, which is the best way to learn. I got the idea for this video from Brilliant. I was going through a course on multivariable functions, and it made me want to play around with 3D graphing. If you enjoy thinking in 3D, I can recommend this course. Brilliant makes it easy and fun to start learning advanced math topics on a daily basis. You end up understanding the concepts on a higher level, but then you also learn the skills to solve specific problems. It really is great. If you want to check out Brilliant.org, they have a free 30-day trial. You can visit Brilliant.org slash AndyMath or click on the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. How exciting.